You want more people to play your Scratch? Well then perhaps it's time to make your games mobile friendly. Yeah, so many people want to play Scratch on their mobile devices these days, and to ensure they're not left out, today's tutorial will cover the most asked for of mobile friendly control schemes, the fixed mobile thumbstick control. It has only two parts, a fixed circular base, and contained within a small draggable stick. The whole thing stays neatly locked to one corner of the screen out of the way, but the best part is that this little beauty can be dropped easily into almost any Scratch project. Then with a little tweaking you'll have your game's mobile ready in no time. Indeed, stay tuned because I'll be choosing a selection of your projects at random, and we'll see just how easy it is to add, and then play these games using it. How exciting is that? So, are you ready? Yeah, well, let's get scratching. So starting a new project, we'll keep our scratch cat, but make a new sprite for our controller, naming it control stick. Then in the costume editor, name the costume base. We'll begin by designing the base of the thumbstick. Feel free to make this look any way you want, and just take what I do as a guide. I'm making an all-black base, drawing the initial circle while holding shift to ensure it's a perfect circle. I'm aiming for a size of around 85 by 85 pixels. Then we must drag the shape until it snaps to the middle of the canvas, like so. This is such an important step, so please don't forget to do this. Then, purely for effect, I'm drawing a second circle around the first, but this one's just an outline without a fill. Again, snap it to the center. Cool, I like that. Next up, we'll add a second costume, this time naming it Stick. So, why are we adding this to the same sprite? Rather than the simpler approach of adding a separate sprite for this, the reason is, if it's all scripted in one sprite, that makes it far easier to backpack and copy into other projects. So, to draw the thumbstick, I will use pure white. Ha, huh? but this does make it tricky to see when you're drawing. This one is around 33 by 33 pixels. Again, snap the circle to the center. And again, I'm drawing another circle around the inner one to make it look extra nice. Brilliant, now we can just drag the joystick base on the stage to position it where we want the controller to appear in our game. Right, time to lay down some code blocks. Then flag clicked, switch costume to base. Then set ghost effect to 60. And now we run the project. Cool, this makes the joystick base transparent. That's very important so that we can see the gameplay behind it. Since we're using a single sprite, we'll use a create clone of myself block to generate a separate sprite for the top thumbstick. And a when I start as clone event block lets us continue the scripts for just the new clone. So adding a switch costume to stick only affects the new clone sprite. And we run the project, and ah, you might have hoped to see the white thumbstick appearing in front of the darker base, but no, it doesn't. The reason is simple, the clone has been created, but clones always appear one layer behind their original sprites, not in front as we need here. So, fix that with a go forward one layer. And there we go, the stick has appeared. Wonderful, and I think we can risk making it a little less faint. Cool, this makes the joystick base transparent. That's very important so that we can see the gameplay behind it. Since we're using a single sprite, we'll use a create clone of myself block to generate a separate sprite for the top thumbstick. And a when I start as clone event block lets us continue the scripts for just the new clone. So adding a switch costume to stick only affects the new clone sprite. And we run the project and ah, you might have hoped to see the white thumbstick appearing in front of the darker base, but no, it doesn't. The reason is simple, the clone has been created, but clones always appear one layer behind. Their original sprites, not in front as we need here. So, fix that with a go forward. One layer. And there we go, the stick has appeared. Wonderful. And I think we can risk making it a little less faint. Set goes to 25%. Very attractive, like a licorice wheel. I do rather like licorice. How about you? Yum. Shall we get this little stick moving around? Bring in a forever loop. Now any press of a touch screen is detected in scratch by the mouse down block. So, wait until. Mouse down. This will pause the script until we touch the screen. Now we repeat until the user's finger is no longer touching the screen, that is, not mouse down. Then in here we can go to mouse position. This will make the control stick follow the mouse until the user releases it. It's testing time again. Now, a little warning, you have to switch to full screen mode to test the project from now on, otherwise you'll end up grabbing the sprite on the stage as you drag and that messes things up no end. Oh yeah, this is looking promising. I can click and drag the little circle around, and the larger circle stays still. Cool. Next, we shall make the smaller stick return to the center when we finish dragging it. Drag in a new go to block and drop it in. As the first block in the forever loop, we want it to always start in the center. The center is defined by the position of the base sprite here. But not only is the control stick sprite not listed in the go to sprite list, but there's the added confusion that we have two control stick sprites, the original and the clone. Which sprite would scratch pick? 
Well, the good news is, it always chooses. The original sprite, and that is the base. There's a few workarounds to get the same. Missing sprite name in this block. Today I'm going to use a variable to do the job. Scrap this default one, and make a new variable, naming it base sprite, or if you're daft. Like me, call it myself, and mark it for this lemon only. Right, under the first green flag script, set myself to the name of this sprite, that is control stick. I'm going to copy and paste it to make sure I spell it just the same, capital letters and all. Great, so now we can use this variable to tell the sprite where to go to, and that is the original controller stick sprite. Give it a test. We drag and release the stick, and it springs back most satisfyingly to the center of the base. That's great. So, if we're going to control our games. With this stick, we'll need a way of reading back a stick position from the thumbstick. Sprite. First we'll get the direction of the stick. To help us see what's happening, I'm going to draw a little arrow on the thumbstick. But don't worry, I'll remove this once we're done. Make sure it points to the right. We want to find the direction of the thumbstick from the thumbstick base. But since we are coding within the thumbstick clone, the thumbstick itself, let's start by pointing back towards the base sprite. That is, the myself variable again. Gosh, I really wish I'd call that variable base sprite. Oh, it would make so much more sense. Right now. Hindsight right. Now we can see as we drag the stick, it does. Point back perfectly. So, if we were to flip it around 180 degrees. There we go, sweet. It is pointing in the direction we are dragging it. We're half. Way there. Let's record this direction in a variable so it can be used in our games. Make a new variable named stick direction, leaving it for all sprites. Then set stick. Direction to direction. Now, we look at how far the player has pushed. The stick away from the middle, that is, the amount of power applied to this movement. Make a new variable, stick power, also for all sprites. And this we set to the distance between the thumbstick and the base. Distance to my stick. Self. And it's testing time. Smash that green. Flag and watch those stick variables fly. The stick direction tells us the direction. The stick is pointing in, and the power variable tells us how fast we are moving it in that. Direction. We only have one problem. The little thumbstick. Can be yanked right out of its base and across the screen. That's not right, no, we must. Constrain it to the base circle, and that would be around here. Yes, a stick power of around 25 anymore, and it will have gone too far. So, we can check for this with an if. Stick power is greater than 25. But hold on, I feel this 25 will crop up again. So let's make a variable to hold this value in. Name it max stick for this sprite only. And we set it after the green flag is clicked to 25. Great, replace the greater than 25. Down here with our max stick variable. So, if the stick power has gone further than max stick, then we want to move it back to the max stick distance, 25. We can calculate the change needed by subtracting stick power from max stick. This gives us the negative difference between these two numbers. Moving by this takes us back to here. Perfect. So, move steps with the subtract operator. On the left we have max stick, and from this, we subtract stick power. Cool, let's try it out. Oh man, yes, this is great. The little stick control is nicely constrained inside the larger circle, but we can still make finer movements within this area too, and that's what we need. However, the stick power variable is unfortunately not capped at 25. Okay, no problem. After moving the thumbstick back, stuff in a set stick power to max stick. Again, this will be 25. So, checking that out, and yep, there we go, it now maxes out at 25. But in all honesty, when we use the controller in our games, it is unlikely a power of 25 will mean anything to us. Better if the max power variable reads as 1 for max power, and 0 for no power. That would make it consistent and simple to use. Bring in another set stick power block, and we will simply divide the existing stick. Power value by max stick to ensure that the value never gets greater than 1. And the proof is in the pudding, and there it is, a maximum power of 1 achieved. One more thing before we can try using this stick, and that is, when the stick snaps back. To the middle after I release it, the stick power variable must reset too. So, up here, set stick power to the empty value. This indicates that we are not touching the stick at all. Pop it under the go to myself at the top of this forever loop. Great, and the power resets to nothing as expected. I'm really pleased with how this is behaving, we'll be controlling a game with this in no time. So, I'll remove the small arrow from our stick costume, and then click into the scratch. Cat sprite 1 sprite. Scratchy will help us test this controller out. Quickly now, when green flag clicked, forever, this is our game loop. Now we'll check if the controller is being used, if stick power is greater than zero. Then we simply point in direction, and drop in the stick direction variable. So what do we have here then? We've only got a mobile stick that can change scratch. Cat's direction, that's what. How cool is this? So, how about a bit of movement too? Move forward by stick power steps, but remember, stick power never gets bigger than one. That is never going to get anywhere fast. So thrust in a meaty multiply block, and make the stick. Power six times more speedy. Woohoo, and now we are getting somewhere. It is nice to have a stick that allows for slow or fast movement just as you need them. 
so we can run away from a mob, or skillfully edge around an obstacle. At least that's the idea if it wasn't so fiddly to use on a touchscreen. Okay, let's talk about stick activation. Did you notice how the thumbstick gets activated? Even when we click as far away as this from the controller. Well, that's no good. If we want to be able to click on other buttons or elements on the screen without moving the thumbstick, so this must be fixed. The common technique used is to only allow the joystick to be activated when the mouse press begins in the area just around the thumbstick controller. Once activated, it captures all movement, no matter if you stray outside the activation area or not. Then on release of the mouse button, the capture is over. This also means you can't click outside the activation area and then drag over it to begin using the stick. No, it requires activation with a direct click. Cool, shall we code that up? Switch to the control stick sprite. This forever loop is getting too long. We can break it up. Separate off the whole of this repeat until script. This is specifically dealing with dragging the thumbstick around. That is once it has been activated. We'll wrap this up in a new custom block naming it stick drag. Please, please, please do not take the run without screen refresh. That should only be used if the script is supposed to run instantly, but we know this script will run for as long as the mouse is held down, so don't run without screen refresh. Right, attach the new defined block to the orphan repeat until script. Before we make use of this new stick drag block, we'll do a little rethinking of the forever loop here. I think it makes more sense to replace this wait until mouse down with the repeat until mouse down. The reason is that then we can continually reposition the thumbstick to match the position of its base, just in case we ever move the base around mid-game. Well, we might next bring in the if-else block and drop in a less than operator. Now the mouse has been clicked, but is it close enough to the thumbstick to activate? Hit. We check the distance to mouse pointer, being less than him. I'm thinking perhaps around 100 pixels for starters, and in which case I'll just use the size block that starts at 100%. And that also means that if we resize the controller sprite, this check will scale with it. So, if we are within 100 pixels of the base of the thumbstick, we can use a stick drag block. This stick is activated, but otherwise, we clicked outside the activation area. In this case, we simply wait until the mouse is not pressed down, not mouse down, before we continue to loop around and wait for the next mouse press, beautiful. Let's see this in action. Firstly, when clicking on the stick, I can use it as before, and also I can still drag outside the controller and it keeps working. It's captured the mouse input. That's great, but if I release a touch and start pressing elsewhere on the screen, now the thumb control does not activate. Splendid. Let's see just how close I have to be to activate this thing. Him. Actually, it appears the activation. Distance may be slightly too lenient. I think we should require it to be closer. We can scale down this size from 100 to say around 60 by multiplying size by 0.6. Now if I click around the stick, I have to be really close. Yeah, really close to activate. Hit. Cool. So, you can play with this 0.6 number to configure how close to the control you want yours to activate. The last action to confirm is that I can't control the stick by starting a touch outside of the activation area, even if I then drag back and over the thumbstick. No, splendid, it works great. Good job. So this type of thumbstick control scheme is excellent for games like Slither.io, or that kind of genre where you want to point your avatar in any direction. But what about other games where we need to track the X and Y direction separately? Let's change the player sprite to be like a standard platformer, having an if left arrow pressed, and if right arrow pressed to move the player left or right respectively. So, the problem here is that our stick direction and stick power don't translate super easily to this. Instead, what we want is our stick x and stick y variable instead of the direction and power. The good news is that these values can be quickly calculated using our friend. Trigonometry. Stick x is equal to stick power multiplied by the sine of stick direction, and stick y equals stick power multiplied by the cosine of stick direction. This will be used so much it makes sense to code it right into the control. Stick sprite itself, so click back in there now. Find the defined stick drag script, and we'll begin by making two new variables, stick x for all sprites, and stick y also for all sprites. Then scroll down to where we set stick power, and now we can set stick x too. And here we go. Multiply stick power with the sign of stick direction. Yeah. Then duplicate that, making sure to set not stick x, but stick y, and then change the sign for a cosine. Gosh, you should be getting pretty familiar with us using the sign and cost blocks in this way. They are so useful, and we'll use them like this over and over again. So, click the green flag, and here are the stick x and y variables. Updating as we drag the thumb stick around. Hold on, I note that when we release the stick, these values are not resetting back to zero. We should fix that. We'll need a set stick x and stick y block, but this time setting them both to zero. Yes, having an empty value in here can cause us more problems than it solves. So yeah, set them to zero. But where do we drop it in? Not in this custom block, but back over here under the when I start as a clone, just after we set stick power to the blank value. 
That makes sense. To do it all together. A quick test. And that is great. The stick X and Y values are. Resetting when I release the mouse. Well then, let's see if we can plug this. Into our test game script. Click into the first sprite. And well, I guess we can actually. Just replace the whole left and right checks with the change X by. And then multiply stick. X by 6 for extra speed. And this is a great test as it shows how we've completely separated the X and Y axis from each other. I can drag the stick left and right to control the cat, but the up and down axis does nothing at all. But what if we didn't want to recode the whole control system and wanted to plug in to an existing game just mimicking the more conventional left and right key presses? Well, in that case, it might be best to count any movement of the stick past a certain distance. Say over 0.5 to mean that we are walking to the right or to the left or jumping. To do this, bring in an OR so we can keep the left key press check in place, and then add in a less than operator, and for movement, we check whether stick X is less than negative, minus 0.5. For the right control we do the same, but check for stick X being greater than positive 0.5. So, how does this play out? Trying some little movements first, and that doesn't do anything, no movement of our cat. But as soon as we go over the threshold, off goes our player. Splendid. And that still works with any key. Presses too, so that's fantastic. Right, now to have a whole lot of fun. We can't know how well this thumbstick works without dropping it into a few real scratch games and having a play. But before we do, I just want to make the thumbstick a little bit bigger. It may work well on large PC screens, but when played on a mobile phone, not so much. Boy is this thing tiny. No problem, click into the control stick sprite and drop in a set size block before we set max stick. And we'll try setting this to 200%. Yeah, that will be huge. And wowzers, look at that. Great for players with big thumbs and small devices I guess, but there's a problem. We can't drag the thumbstick far enough to reach the edge of the base circle anymore. That's because we need to increase our max stick variable in relation to the sprite size too. Well, 25 is a quarter of the original size of 100, so set max stick to size divided by 4. We get 4 by dividing 100 by our previous 25. There, that's better. We should just fix the position of our controller so it's fully on screen. Stop the project and drag the base to wherever you want it to sit. I think I'll try it on the right hand side for now instead. Yes, that works so well. Perhaps it's just a little oversized though, so maybe I'll size it back down to 140%. And one more tweak, drop in a go to front. Under the green flag script, right at the start to make sure the controller is brought in front of all the other sprites in the project. And now we open our backpack and drop the whole control stick sprite in there. And I'm so excited to try this out, but even more excited to see how you guys will get on with this. Just remember, the studio for this project is linked in the video description, and it's going to be so fun because you get to choose any of your games to put in there, as long as you've added a mobile joystick to show off. Okay, so without any forethought at all, let's find a fun-looking project. How about Snowy Town by Tien? Hey, what's this? MMO platformer. Well, turns out this is a remix of one of my games, who knew? But why not? I can confirm it does not have any mobile controls yet, so perfect. I'll look inside and locate the key press scripts. Ah, here they are. So first we need to open our backpacks and drag in the control stick sprite. Then back in the main game sprite, I'll replace the WASD with our stick controls. Replace the right key presses, checks with if stick X is greater than 0.5. Then for the left movements, stick X is less than 0.5. Quick test. Here we go. Yeah, look at this, I can easily move left and right with the thumbstick. Now this may be a common issue though, the thumbstick sprite is still not in front of the other sprites in the game. To fix that, perhaps we can just click into the thumbstick sprite and add a wait one second before it starts setting up the stick. We could also trigger this off a broadcast event or any other way that works for you. Okay, back in the game sprite. The jump key is detected here. I'll replace the space. Key check with the check for stick Y being greater than 0.5. Here we go again, but this time, dragging the stick up lets us jump around too. Yippee. And we are off. Hey, this isn't half bad. What do you think? That marks the end of our lesson. It is time to head home. Be safe on your way home and do not talk to a stranger. If you enjoyed today's lesson, do not forget to like the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in. See you on the next one. Bye bye.